life. Come on, shout, shout, shout. Michele, 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 Michele. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, that was really the clap of someone who knows that the favor of God is on his life. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Woo! Don't we all love Jesus? What a wonderful God. Yes, we're going to invite our pastor, Pastor Joe Samalenge, and as he's coming up, please clap your hands. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. A blessing amen? amen just to be in the presence of God what a blessing amen what a blessing thank you for coming we are we are happy that you are here but I believe the Lord is happier amen, amen. because the Lord wants you in his presence always amen, amen. I'm gonna preach if anybody needs translation, could you please give them devices if you don't understand? Yeah? Everything is fine. Praise God. But before I preach, I want you to do me a favor, people of God. You see, every time I stand here and preaching, the Lord always tells me, look behind. When I look, it's always a mess. We need to respect the house of God. You cannot come late and then you spend 30 seconds in that door kissing people. It, it's very disturbing. I want to concentrate on God and God say, look, we need to grow. Amen? We need to grow. It's very disturbing in the spirit when I'm trying to listen to God and every time God says, look, when I take your name to God, I do it very seriously. I'm aggressive to God. What about so-and-so's life? And then God will say, look at the person. You are just giving me a hard time for this person. Look at that person. You cannot... We, we need to respect the house of God. We need to grow. If you want to kiss people, come 30 minutes before service. You can hug and do everything you want. But once it's 11, it's God's time. Repeat this with me. Me mu aptu. It's Greek. Can you say it again? Me, me up to. It means touch me not. And we are going to understand. When Mary got saw Jesus at the tomb, Jesus said, Me, me up to. Touch me not. And you are going to understand why I'm insisting that we need to grow. We need to respect the Lord. Amen. We need to respect the Lord. We need to be with God. Let's go. Um, let us read the book of John. John 20, 11. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. Amen. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain. One of the head and one of the, at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord. And I am not, and I do not know where they have laid him. So I want you to realize that Mary is talking about Jesus as a dead body okay so she's still thinking of Jesus as a dead body now let's continue saying this she turned around and saw Jesus standing but she did not know that it was Jesus Jesus said to her woman why are you weeping whom do you seek this is a very intriguing conversation Supporting him to be the gardener, 
She said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have led him, and I will take him away. So you can understand that in the mind of Mary, somebody took Jesus and led him away. Can you show me where my Lord is so I can go take him back? Amen? It's very interesting. Jesus, Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Okay? Today you are going to discover a lot of revelations. Can you say Rabuni? Jesus said to her, do not. Sometimes they use the word hold me. That's why Jesus said, me more up to. Amen. Touch me not. Amen. <laughs> For I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Our topic today is God has agreed with your salvation so obey God. Does that make sense? God has agreed your salvation obey God's command. This is a very interesting scene that is happening you know, people that study theology, they can give you all kinds of argument. Mary was not in good mental state. Mary was grieving. We, we can argue all of that, okay? But here, I'm not going to preach like a theologian. I'm going to preach like a preacher. Amen? Of course you are devastated when the only man you know to be good is dead. Mary was a prostitute. She went with many men, but she didn't find a good man until she found Jesus Christ. Amen? So she began to follow him everywhere because Jesus Christ is actually the man in the image of God. So she found something precious in Jesus. And then Jesus says, I'm going to die. And the third day, I'm going to rise from the dead. So, but when Jesus dies, it's, it looks like everybody kind of forgot what he said to them. Because of the sin, you know, it's like in an horror movie. Okay? This person dies, and they put soldiers at his tomb. It's too much for this woman to unfold and process. But let me say this to you. The devil is more afraid of you. You know, he rushes to put you in a tomb. He rushes to possess your life. He rushes to put you in prison. But then he realizes that it was cheaper to get you in prison than to keep you. Right? If they want to arrest you today, they will send soldiers one time. They come, boop, boop, boop. They arrest you. Then they put you in prison. Then somebody has to sleep 24. See how expensive it is to keep somebody. Now, Basaya. They are more afraid of you when you are in prison than even when you are free. It's quite interesting. They were more afraid of Jesus. Alive, Jesus was walking around preaching, but dead now, soldiers 24-7. He's dead, for God's sake. Amen. Why are you so scared of him? Because of the word he said, I'm going to rise the third Mm, 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 mm. So Mary is in all that drama, right? All that drama that happened to him, to, to Jesus and to her. And so they are somewhere with the disciples. You know, when you're a woman, 
You see Peter who was talking a lot is quiet, meditating. Philip, Andrew, Simon, they are all quiet. Mary is probably devastated. Like even this man, everybody, these men, they are all lost. Amen? You get scared as a woman. Sunday morning, she said, can we go check the Lord? Say, uh, woman, you go. It's like if I know there'll be a lot of cops on the road, I'd rather have Rosalie drive. <laughs> Amen? Have you noticed that? Cops don't usually pull over women most of the time. The same speed, a man, ah, the same speed, a woman, they smile. <laughs> Amen? Isn't that true? The other Sunday, I told you a cop pulled me over to give me a ticket, remember? We were coming down the hill. You know when you come down the hill, your car kind of takes a little bit of speed. Yesterday, when in the car, there was a woman in front of me. She was coming really fast. I said, oh, this one? They got her. She only realized the cops were like five yards away and she broke like shh. And I look at two cops, they were smiling to each other. <laughs> the same place, the same trap. So the disciples were like, listen, there are soldiers over there, you women. Amen. So Mary went to the tomb with all that in mind. It's too much going on. She gets there just to find out the tomb is empty. Oh, oh. Where did you put my Lord? She's still talking about Jesus as if he was dead. Do you still talk about Jesus in your life as if he was still dead? Are you still looking for the body of Christ? Hey, Yaba. Jesus is right there, sitting, looking at her, looking like a gardener. So maybe Jesus did it, you know, deliberately to appear like a gardener so that she's not afraid. Because if he appeared with all the glory there, maybe he was going to attract a big crowd. Jesus wanted some privacy. So he just appeared like a little gardener, you know? My brother Kyoko here is a good gardener, so Jesus appeared like you. <laughs> Amen. And Mary could not recognize him. But now, now, when you look at the story, it looks like Jesus is on this side and there are angels on this side because she has to turn every time. It's like she's speaking to the angels. Where did they put my Lord? Oh, I want to I want to go get him. And then she turns to the gardener. So it is like a back and forth. At some point, Jesus said, Mary. She recognizes the voice. My sheep know my voice. Amen? Amen. So she turns and says, oh. But then look at what she says. Teacher. Hey, today I'm going to give you great revelations. So you are my teacher. She wants to probably hug Jesus. And that Jesus say. Me more up to touch me not, amen. Touch me not. Listen to the revelation here. If you are still trying to touch Jesus as a teacher, it's not gonna work. Jesus wanted her to realize now I am the Lord. I'm no longer in that body of a teacher. I'm in a glorious body of the Lord. There are things that God has already agreed upon your life. But they will never happen if Jesus is just a teacher to you. They only begin to happen when he becomes. Huh? Ah. Me move up to. Touch me not. I'm not the Jesus who was walking around with you all over the place. <laughs> 
But this is what he said. I have to go to my father. If you read in the book of Hebrews, the Bible says he went to the holy of holies. Jesus saved us. That's, there's no question. He said it is finished on the cross. But why is he saying I need to go to the Father first? Because God knows a principle called an altar. You have to present the sacrifice and the Father has to agree. So he goes to his Father now and the Father agrees. That's what I said. God has agreed you all. What am I trying to say? How can God agree if he was the one who started it? God may want to do things for you, but it doesn't mean it's already agreed. It's when God is pleased with the sacrifice. So he says this, huh? go tell my brethren that I'm going to my father and your father. I'm going to my God and your God. And then if you continue to read, I'm going to prepare you a place over there. God has already agreed your salvation in the sacrifice of the blood of Jesus. But God wants you to know his move from just a mere teacher to the Lord. He's giving you commands. Mary Touch me not, but go and tell. Amen. Mimu. Up to. Okay? So I'm giving you some vocabulary. You know? If you don't want him to touch you, but you don't want to say it in English, you say Mimu up to. <laughs> if they ask you, what did you mean? I was speaking in tongues. <laughs> Amen. Me, me up to touch me not. I'm gonna give you a testimony. This this preaching started with this testimony. God was talking to me. In 2010, when they gave me Papa Briali got married on July 16th, July 17th, I was given full scholarship. I was given a scholarship to come to the U.S. as a student. So they asked me to give my address to send me the I-20. And I was supposed to be in school on August 20th. So I had just a little over a month. Now when I look, I say, thank you, Lord. You know, you're excited. I'm going to America. And then you realize there's an interview in Kinshasa to go through. Amen? For me to get to Kinshasa, I need to fly. So I need money for flight ticket. I need money to pay for the interview. And in case I, I'm given the visa, I need money to pay for the visa. I go on my knees and I say, God, thank you for the scholarship. Thank you for the opportunity. But how, how am I going to get there? I need money. But look at what the Lord said to me. Go to the mountain. Who finds money at the mountain? I go to the mountain, I found a woman who looked like she was in her late 50s and she was praying against almost everybody in her house. So I found the woman, she was like, Lord, kill them! Hey! Listen to me, God did not tell me go to the mountain to pray. He said go to the when Jesus tells you to do something as your Lord, you go even if you don't understand. I'm asking for money. Say, go to the mountain. Maybe I was going to find gold. I don't know. But I get that I find the woman very angry. And she was blaming everybody in her house. Kill them. That sister in law, that mother in law. Yes, <laughs> You know, sometimes you go somewhere, you hear what the person is saying, you even forget your problem. I say, okay, Lord, so you brought me here to look at this drama here. Is that what I was supposed to do today? He said, no. Ask that woman, tell her I did not bring her here to lament. I brought her here to seek my face. 
I say, hey, hey, mama, sorry, sorry, oh, listen, I'm a servant of God, the Lord just told me to tell you, he did not bring you here to insult people in your family and curse them in prayer, he invited you here to seek his face, I'm going to suggest that you repent, let me pray for people in your house, I am going to pray for them, you seek the face of God, let's see where we're going, Sanctification ministry. Let me pray for your lamentations. You seek the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we begin to pray. And I was praying, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I recommend those people. Because I don't know them, it's easy for me to forgive them. I forgive them. Lord, forgive them. And the woman was repenting. After about 30 minutes of prayer, she began to speak in tongues spoke in tongues for about five to ten minutes and then she looked at me and she said my brother the Lord is showing me a trip to the United States you are preparing to go to America God told me he has agreed with your trip amen he has agreed this is about 6 p.m. Huh? And you know where I come from in Likasi? 6 p.m. is almost like very night already. Everybody's going to their homes. There's nobody on the street. <laughs> 7 p.m. is dark. And she said, tonight, somebody's going to give you an envelope of $800, which was the money that I needed to go to Kinshasa and do everything. Of course, she's speaking to me. She goes from a crazy woman to a woman who's telling me God has agreed with my trip and tonight I'm going to receive $800 she went from a crazy Mary to the one to announce the resurrection a woman who could not even recognize Jesus was right in front of her she's the proclaimer of his resurrection does that make sense? so I go down with that woman we are walking, just the two of us I'm pretty sure if my mom saw me that day, she was going to say, you and your God. Now you marry old people, old women like this. Because it was just the two of us. So we're going down. I got to my place. She continued with her a trip. My cousin calls me. I need to see you tonight. That cousin of mine would usually bring me some prayer requests and I'll pray for him. I said, are you sure? Can't you wait for tomorrow? He said, no, this cannot wait. I have to see you tonight. Okay, I'm home now. You can come. So he came around 8 p.m. I got in his car. We were in the car, the two of us talking. And then he said, listen, the Lord put too much pressure on me. Can you say the pressure is on the other side? Can you say that? The pressure is on the God that is keeping you in prison. Let's continue. <laughs> So he says to me, the Lord put too much pressure on me that I need to bring you this envelope right now. I said to him, before I take the envelope, let me tell you the story that just happened at the mountain. The woman told me somebody was giving me $800 in an envelope tonight. Maybe that's you. He begins to shiver because there was $800 in that envelope. God has already agreed with your trip. God has already agreed with your marriage. God has already agreed uh, with your prosperity. The only problem is, can you now relate to him as Lord and obey his command? Amen. Can you obey his command? He's telling you do this. That's why God is upset with me all the time. You, you come to pray for people, but look at how they behave. They don't come to church as if they're coming to meet the Lord. We're coming to church as if we're coming to meet the sister that I did not see all week. Mary, I need to go to heaven. 
for your salvation to be agreed upon by God. But you go and proclaim. God will always send you somewhere. God will always ask you to do something for him. Before he was a teacher showing you the way. But now is the Lord commanding you on the way. Mimu Abdu. Touch me not. If Jesus is still just a teacher to you, even when you pray, he look at you like, Mimu Abdu. Touch me. Obey God's command. God has already agreed to heal, to deliver, to transform, to reconcile, to consolidate. But God needs people. She called him Rabuni, but when she goes to the disciples, she says, My Lord has resurrected her. In a very short period of time, she just called him Rabuni, but she goes and say, My Lord, the one I'm ready to die for, the one I can do anything for. So, this was after the wedding. And the following weekend, we were supposed to go at Mama Fanny's house, a parent's house, so that they cook for us. You know when you do the wedding and then they have to cook for you. And as we were in cars, there was a lot of us, so there was kind of a little traffic. And we got, when we got to the gate of the house, we, there were so many of us, so the traffic slowed really down. And I saw the woman that I met at the mountain. She was with two other women and she was joyful. When she saw me, she brought them. She said, this man, this is at the window of a car. This is the man who prayed for me. This is my sister-in-law. This is my sister-in-law. God has agreed with your salvation. But God wants you to refer to him as Lord. And obey his commands. Let us read. Let's go back to the, the Easter, Passover. Let's go to Exodus. Listen to what God is saying. I don't want to preach too long. I want to be together and talk and laugh and be happy. In this manner, you shall eat it. This is how you eat the Passover lamb. And I want you to look at some elements here, one by one. Listen, this is how it's your loin. Your loins good. That's the number one. You eat the Passover lamb, your loin good. It's like you, you, you fasten your belt. Okay? So belt is number one. Your sandals on your feet. Canaba Santa. Number two, sandals. Number three, your staff, your rod in your hands. Enakayamesa. And you shall eat it at haste. Fast. Okay? It is the Lord's. Passover. God is saying, you need to understand that you are in Egypt. You are going to do this Passover thing for me and for you, but you need to do it with a mindset of somebody that is ready to leave uh, Egypt. Somebody that is on the go. That's why you need to be clothed, belt, and rolled like a sojourner. 
because I'm going to kill every firstborn of Egypt. You don't know what the Egyptian could do to you. You are eating ready to. Thank God everything is to go now. Amen. But what does the belt represent? Truth. Can you look for me? Uh, can you check Romans chapter, uh, Acts, Acts chapter 12 from verse 5? I want to I read something like that as well. Listen, people of God. You need to have the truth with you. You don't get out of the world slowly. You need to get out of Egypt really. In Amasai, in Gloria. And as you do so, what do you do? You take the seat, you fasten your belt. What does the belt represent? The truth. Ephesians chapter 6, right? The truth. What does the garment represent? Righteousness. You need to understand that the life you are embracing is a life of sanctification, righteousness. And then, what else? What is the sandals? The zeal? Ma, 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 ma. And then you have to take a rod. You know what a rod is? It's protection. It's like the shield, huh? Adonai Rohi, the Lord is my. Even though I walk in the valley of the shadow of doubt, I will fear no. For what? For thy rod protects me. And then he said, you need to do it fast. Let's go to Acts chapter 12. So Peter was kept in prison. But earnest prayer for him was made to God by the church. Okay? This is how you get out of prison. This is how you get out of a tomb. This is how you get out of obsession. This is how you get out of uh, sin. It has to be fast. But this is how you do it. Let's continue. Let's go. See if you see the very same things. Okay? The very night when Herod was about to bring him, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries before the door were guarding the prison. Do you know how many people it's very expensive to keep somebody in prison, even for the devil. I want you to understand that. Let's continue. And behold, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell, and he struck Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up. You need to get up quickly, or the Lord will say, Mimu, up to touch me not she got up quickly and the chains fell off his hands now listen the angel said to him what put the, the garment like you are eating Passover put the garment put on your do you see the meaning of Easter after this Easter, I want to see you with the zeal of the gospel. Otherwise, you're lying to yourself. Let's continue. And he did so. And then he said to him, what? Wrap your... around and follow me. They look almost the same. That's how you get out of prison. That's how you get out of curses blood curses family curses that's how you get out of the grave that's how you get out of obsession and possession you need to do it quicker and once you are out you need to know that you have your sandals you have the truth and you have righteousness with you and you walk hallelujah to follow the lord and obey his command that is easter Otherwise, the Lord will say, Mimu, up to. Touch me not. Fast. Amen. Fast. Quickly. 
Remember when God is about to get into Zacchaeus' house? Do you know what he said to him? Get on. Salvation is something you lose two seconds. The devil blocks you. You need to be. That's how you eat the Passover lamb. God has already agreed on your salvation. God has already agreed on your transformation. God has already agreed to cancel family curses, blood curses. God has already agreed to heal you. God has already agreed uh, on your future. You see, when we were worshiping, I look, I look at a lot of young people. They're just sitting. God has already agreed on your future to bless you. But he wants you to wake up. When he says, let us worship, he wants you to look, stand up and when we praise, he wants you to stand up and do what? And praise. He says to Mary, go. Do you know, do you know, I understand Mary. This is Jesus we're talking about. Just for you to turn and see, this is three days later, after he died, you see Jesus in front of you. Our human reaction will be what? But yet the Lord still says to her, Me more after. Go instead and proclaim. You've been asking God for something. You've been trying to touch him over. He keeps saying, Me more. Go. Go tell. Do this. Do that. Obey to God. Because he already agreed your transformation. He's already agreed to bless you. He's already agreed to fill you with anointing. But he needs somebody that will say, yes, Lord. <laughs> Let me pray for your problem. You seek the Lord. That was the mission God gave me at that mountain. God has already agreed. You know, it's not everything you ask God, He agrees. Huh? But there are things that God has already agreed. But all God is waiting for is for you to become huh, a sheep. It's for you to become a subject of God. To surrender to Him completely as His Lord. Don't look at Jesus just as a teacher. A teacher teaches you and advises you. The Lord commands you to do things. Whether you understand them or you don't. Does that make sense? As the Lord, he doesn't care. You can tell him, Father, we used to come to church where gas was like $8 a gallon. You're still going to come. Now, let me say this to you. Gas did not go down because people were staying home and not going to church. Gas came down because of those who went to church and spent a lot of money. Come. Two of you. Come on. feeling my hand as if I'm marrying you to somebody. It's going to happen anyway. <laughs> Let's do it. They came out of Egypt really fast, right? And then they met the first obstacle. See? They've met the Red Sea. is right there. Behind them, the Egyptians are coming. Around them, people are complaining. We used to eat rice in Egypt. You may enjoy your life right now. But if it is in Egypt, you are still a slave. It doesn't matter how much you enjoy it. You need to get out of Egypt. So they got out of Egypt. Now there's this problem. Moses goes to God and says, What did God say? 
tell my people to move, eh? to jump in the water. Okay? So this one is like, Moses, did you see my nice hair? <laughs> I am going anywhere. Amen? She stays here. She's complaining. This one is like, Pastor Joe, can you go first? Remember, you are the pastor. <laughs> you should show the way. Different type of people. Those who are negative. Those who say, you go first, I will see. And those who go first. Who caused the miracle? It's this one who's going. He got into the Red Sea. The water was here. The water got here. The water got here. The water got here. The water got here. And God is like, next you are going to die. Now I can open. You want God to open the sea for you when the road is still here. You're not going to drown here. There's no risk. There's no danger. If you want God to answer your prayers to manifest his glory, you need to be in danger. You need to move forward in faith huh? until you're about to die. If you are too safe, you're going to stay where you are. Let me go back again. This time we are on the boat. Jesus is coming walking. <laughs> Ketcha, you should go first. Maybe Jesus can like you and marry you, that ghost. <laughs> when everybody is scared, Peter says, if it is, <laughs> commend, huh? Don't ask me. If you ask, you're asking for my opinion. I'm not going to go there. Commend me to walk. Go check the Greek word used. Because it's your command now. The thing is, if it's God's command, it doesn't mean you won't get in trouble. He still got in trouble. He began to and he said, hey, help me, Lord. How did they go back in the boat? You think Jesus put him on his back? Like an African woman? With the Lord, they walked. Thank you. I appreciate that you were the bad examples. I was the good one. So, listen. Memo up to touch me because I'm your teacher. For you, I'm just a teacher, but now I've become the Lord. The Lord, God has agreed your salvation. Obey God's command. What is He telling you? What is He telling? And there's no justification before God. Can you imagine somebody come to God and say, I'm suffering a lot, God, there's too much. How can I continue to believe in you? Say, go read Job chapter 1, 2, 3. There's no justification. Hey, they are persecuting us today. They don't want us to talk about the name of Jesus at work. Eh? Say, go ask Paul and Peter. We have no reason <laughs> before God. Hey, God, hey, God. We complain too much. Let me pray for your complaints. <laughs> Seek the Lord. Do you know why? Because God has agreed with this church. God has agreed that this is a church. So it's going to continue to move forward. It's going to continue to move forward and obey the Lord. There are tremendous testimonies in this church. I'm telling you, it's because you don't listen. You don't know them. That's why you think God is not at work.
She will come to church like this. Mama Joël. After church, she had to run to two jobs. Running. She will call me every day. Pastor, I want to drop both of them. I'm exhausted. I don't like the fact that I cannot stay at church after church. I don't like this. I, I want to serve the Lord. Hey! <laughs> you see, when it's difficult, still do it. Because that's when the water is coming. The Lord wants to see that despite difficulties, I still want to obey you, my God. Now, <laughs> going in a parking lot, somebody run to her and say, I have a job for you. I'm not going to say, eh, but increase of salary on top of it. Now I can talk to my mother when she's at work. <laughs> she's only there from 3 to 5, 8 to 5. Uh, to 3, sorry, 8 to 3. And she does not work all the time. Sometimes she even talks to me. She's just relaxing. And no Saturday, no Sunday. So when we finish church today, she'll, she'll leave last because she has nowhere to run to. Amen. But it's the sacrifice she made every time, even when it was hard. As soon as it's one, she's running, she's rushing. It's water coming up. It's water coming up. When the God gets here, get God has no choice than to fulfill what he agreed on. God has agreed to give you a good job. God has agreed to change your condition. God has agreed to transform your family. He's agreed everything. Stop being like Mary, crying, where is my, my Lord? Stop complaining. Jesus knew Mary was looking for him. He said, who are you looking? Is it me? The best way to look for me, go and proclaim that I'm resurrected. Go and proclaim. But Jesus knew that's why it had to be Mary. If he was Peter, Peter was going to say, I have to touch you. I'm sorry. Lord and Savior, God has agreed on your salvation. Amen? God has agreed on your marriage. God has agreed to give you children. God has agreed to give you wealth. God has agreed to give you health. God has agreed to bless you. But what is waiting from you is to look at him not just as a teacher but as a the Lord of your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to give uh, our offering. The children are going to sing. And after that, we are going to have Holy Communion. And then we'll be done with our service. Mimu. So if you go in the country, the police wants to arrest you, say, me up to. If they ask you, what is that? I was speaking in tongues, officer. Amen. Me up to.
you very much. Come on, come on, support them, show them love. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Sunday School. You know, I used to be in every drama in Sunday School. Today I'm a pastor. Just the way they're doing their hands like this, God is doing something for them. I'm telling you. They may not understand what it is, but it causes God to do something for them. May we give our offering. sacrifice this morning to offer to you and your kingdom and bless them more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.